Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. A huge part of our lives, including mine as a person with a disability, is depending on our caregivers. But how do you find someone who is reliable, trustworthy, and is comfortable helping us with intimate issues? Kevin Sipneski with the Assist Guide Information Services Organization, or Aegis Network, is here to talk to us about best practices in hiring and maintaining caregivers. Thank you, Kevin, for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Did she rely on a caregiver? I happened to um, stumble across the Aegis website, and what I found so interesting that I couldn't find anywhere else on any other website were tools that actually help the person looking for a caregiver. A lot of tools that I found on the web were for the caregivers themselves, but there was not much other than your website that provided information and guidance on how to find the appropriate caregiver for yourself. Um, and yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah. And, and I understand that um, people, if you're watching this and you want to go to the Aegis Network website, it's Aegis.org. Um, if you go under the toolkit, there are going to be a variety of tools that are available to you to help you. Um, but I wanted to ask you, Kevin, what are some basic questions that someone who's looking for a caregiver should ask or it's important to ask um, a potential caregiver? Um, well, I, you know, I think it, it, it's really like starting any uh, relationship. Uh, because it really is a business relationship as well as a personal relationship. You can have many people that you work with that you really don't have a personal relationship with. But if this is going to be someone that's a caregiver and is, you know, living with you, uh, helping with more intimate things and potentially living with you 24 hours a day, it really is a personal relationship as well as uh, a business relationship. And I think that's one of the things that you have to remember. There has to be a connection and a fit as well as a capability. So if someone's going to stop by for an hour and do something to be gone, you know, maybe you don't have to connect with them personally. But I think in uh, the situations that, that we see so often, that there has to be that, that personal connection as well. And so, you know, the things that you would talk about with, with anyone that you were getting to meet, you know, what do you like to do in your spare time? What are some of your passions? What are your, what are your super likes and dislikes? I mean, it could be as, you know, crazy as, you know, one person loves rock and roll and you want to play that all day and they hate, you know, a certain type of music. And, you know, that might not matter for a week or two, but over time, uh, the, the little things can matter. Uh, and it's not that they have to be your, you know, match made in heaven kind of thing. But I think it is important that we recognize, you know, what are your capabilities as a caregiver from a, uh, you know, competent standpoint, but then how do we fit together as a team? You know, is it, is it, is it a friendship or at least a close personal working relationship? So are there certain questions that we can ask to help gauge the person's character outside of the technical competencies? Yeah, I would think that's just where you're talking about, you know, what do you do in your spare time? Mm. What do you, uh, you know, one question that I always use in interviews and I'm kind of giving it away uh, for any uh, buddy I interview in the future that was taught to me uh, was I can see on your resume here uh, what you've done in your life or what your work has been. But tell me, uh, and it can be part of the things in this resume or it might have nothing to do with this resume at all, but tell me what made you the person you are today. And I have been blown away by the honesty I get from that question. Uh, and um, in many times the, the complete uh, different look at the person sitting in front of me. Uh, it, it really, it, and that's worked for them and against them. And, and then I think the other questions is, you know, what 
was one of the, as a caregiver, if someone's applying and you're talking to them about a caregiving role is, you know, what was one of the best caregiving experiences and situations you've ever been had through. But then you also have to ask the follow-up one, you know, it, what was the worst caregiving experience you've had and what happened? Right. So I think if you're, you try to ask opposing bookends of questions, uh, you hope to meet that person uh, in the middle in their steady state. Um, I know something that I struggle with and, and you stated it a little bit about uh, you touched upon this a little bit about um, it's not just a professional relationship, like a regular job where you can leave and you don't depend on that person anymore. Um, sometimes you have to become very close and spend lots of time together. Um, how do we keep those boundaries between um, being friends and friendly, but also um, being professional? I think you have, that's one of those things that you have to start at the beginning. Um, you have to say, uh, you know, what are the rules of engagement? Um, because it's once something like that has gone on uh, and there never really were any clearly defined rules, then it's going to be really hard now to implement boundaries. But I think if we just all recognize, hey, there's going to need to be boundaries on both sides. Um, and both what are my boundaries as a care recipient or what are your boundaries as a caregiver? Those do get blurred. So it's, let's not let them get blurred. Let's draw them on a line right at the beginning. And, and also setting the expectations and then also setting the expectations of when there's lack of clarity or when one of us is uncomfortable with something, here's what we're going to do, right? Set the expectations, but also set up initially the feedback loop because we all need feedback. Whether you, whichever side of the table you're on, you need feedback. And I think, you know, one of the things that um, I would want to hear out of a caregiver is uh, I'm trainable and I'm adaptable. I know I've had jobs where you get evaluated on a quarterly basis. Um, what do you think about doing that with caregivers? Do you think it's important to do regular checkups? Um, are there evaluation forms that have been developed that help us? evaluate our caregivers so we know that those extra expectations are still on the right track. I think what's working, what's not working on a weekly basis, if you're with this person, you know, constantly, you know, eight, 10, 12, or 24 hours a day, I think you better be talking more than a quarterly review. I think it's, you know, hey, what's working this week? And, and again, it's also got to be at a safe time right? It's got to be, hey, let's get together when neither one of us are stressed, neither one of us are, you know, in the, the throes of frustration um, and, and talk about what, what worked, what didn't work. I think that's going to be the key with, you know, someone that you're in a long-term relationship with in this situation. It's got to be proactive communication, not reactive. That's a really good point. I really like that. So how important is a background check? I think it is the most important thing you can do. And I think it's kind of a, a first step, right? If someone is resistant to you getting a background check on them or you get a background check and there's problems, I don't think it really matters how good a friend you can be um, because that person might be seeming like a very good friend for uh, ulterior motives. I think it's incredibly tragic that there is not a national criminal background check requirement for all caregivers. I don't think you should have someone in your home uh, that is, you know, they're oftentimes unattended and unsupervised uh, with you and all of your uh, valuables uh, without a criminal background check on a national basis. And it might not be a bad idea for a credit check as well, because if you see huge credit issues, then, you know, there, there could very well be a problem around uh, the incentive to uh, abuse someone financially. Do you have any other tips in your experience personally and professionally that you 
think would be helpful for people with disabilities to um, think about when they're hiring a potential caregiver? We all need to be okay with saying, hey, we tried it, this wasn't a good fit, I'm gonna move on. Because too often people say, well, I don't really like this relationship, but I've already tried you know, two caregivers and I'm just gonna deal with this. I don't think that's the way. It, it's you know, someone in your home, someone that you're gonna spend a lot of time with and someone that in some situations is, is dealing with intimate issues. Um, I think it needs to be someone you're comfortable with but also give them the right that, you know, if, you know, just have that again, that conversation up front, proactive. Hey, I don't know if this is going to work out. Let's set a 30 day in a 60 day trial period, or we might know in two weeks, right? Let's set a 14 day in a 30 day trial period and then revisit it. And you can, you know, leave uh, with no harm, no foul. And I can say this isn't working, no harm, no foul. But I, I've seen a lot of times um, families and individuals put up with caregivers that they would tell anyone else they shouldn't put up with. And it might not be because they're bad. It might just be there's not a good fit. Thank you. Um, in regards to Aegis Network, what are some other things that would be helpful for people on your website? Yeah, there's certainly a lot of information on Aegis uh, that, that you can avail yourselves of. Um, but there's also a lot of good organizations out there that people don't know about that where most of this information came from. So a lot of the information you see on our site came from uh, the Family Caregiving Association, FCA, you know, out of San Francisco here. A lot of it came from what used to be called the National Family Caregiving Association or Alliance, uh, NFCA, that's now CAN, CAN, Caregiver Action Network. Um, some of it came from, you know, uh, the hospice foundation, others, other parts of it came from the Alzheimer's foundation. So there's a lot of good organizations these days, certainly more than there were, you know, 10 or 20 years ago that have great information and great content. Um, and I would say, uh, you know, th there's information that, that we have, but don't stop there. If you see a, a footnote, you know, uh, credits due to, you know, FCA or NFCA, go to those sites as well. I don't think we're recognizing that this is just part of who we all are. Uh, you know, the, the old, we're going to be a caregiver and we're going to be a care recipient. Um, and, I, you know, but I don't think we're talking about it enough. And therefore, we're not using the collective knowledge because um, there'll be a point in time where I will need something that you've been through and I could learn so much from you or so much from the person next to me in the cubicle. It needs to change. It, it needs to be no different than any other human condition that we talk about every day. It, it is cyclical. We all like, we started as babies, we received care. And then as we get older, we return that favor to our parents. No man is an Island. There's that famous quote. We all rely on each other. Um, and it's important to know that we deserve a certain quality of care. Um, and it's okay to um, expect that and, uh, and ask for that. Um, and, you know, I think, like you just said, we can learn from each other. And so I want to hear from you, our viewers, have you ever hired a caregiver? And were there success stories? Were there horror stories that you had? Is there something that you learned from those um, successes and failures with a caregiver that you can impart on our community that will help us so we may not have to go through the same suffering that you had to go through? Um, and I just wanna, I wanna encourage this dialogue with everybody. Um, I wanna thank Ke Kevin for uh, joining us today and imparting um, your knowledge of caregiving um, and continuing to do that work through the Aegis Network, which if you're interested in seeing and learning more about is Aegis.org, A-G-I-S.org. Um, and, you know, thank you for creating that <laughs> uh, and for giving us the other resources that are available to us.
um, so we can have the best care possible. Uh, if you like to uh, see more about what One Leg Up Productions can do, what other conversations we can start through chair chats and other shows and want to support us, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thanks so much and be blessed. Thank you.